Opinions expressed on this radio program do not necessarily reflect the views of this radio station. My friends and I always tune into the Todd Levitt Law Show. Todd is entertaining, informative, and always delivers the goods. Todd might not tell you what you want to hear, but he's going to tell you what you need to hear. And all you got to do is listen. Hold on, Todd. Don't let go. It's time for the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Welcome to the Todd L. Levitt Marijuana Law Podcast. Good morning, good evening, and good night. I'm yours truly, Attorney Todd L. Levitt, broadcasting and podcasting. Once again, you know what's coming from the middle of the midst in a beautiful green nutrient field filled with clones, clones, one drone, my good friend Craig Russell the Muscle, and my best friend, Big Hair, a.k.a. 80s rocker, Bob Seger, big hair, and the mothership. <laughs> Craig, how you doing, Craig? We're going to be bringing big hair on the show. Can you I believe know. we've got him in studio? Big hair. It's always amazing when big hair is a guest. It's kind of melancholy, though, because, yes, he's playing uh, the part of Bob Seger, rock star legend, but we lost a couple of rockers this, uh, this past week. We'll talk about that coming up, but uh, big hair on the show is always fantastic. So how are you, Todd? How are things in the the mother, your part of the mothership across the uh, console for me? How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. I, I have uh, a complaint by consent for okay. the show today for the listeners. You, okay. You like that? A complaint by consent. I have consent to complain about something. One of my best friends uh, is now a judge in the Brighton District Court, Livingston County. Big Daddy Danny Bain got appointed by our governor and is now the new judge in Brighton, Michigan. Danny, Dan Bain's been on the show many times. Uh, he's one of my best friends. We came up together. Uh, his father, Jack, outstanding attorney. His brother, uh, John's an attorney, Bain and Bain out of Novi. And Danny, Big Daddy Danny Bain, is now the new judge in Novi, Michigan, Craig. Is he really called Big Daddy Danny Bain? Is that what he goes by? He's like 6'4", 230. Right. Just a big Irish guy. I mean, he's... He, he's a big man. He could go to the Highland Games and win with one hand tied behind his back. I'm glad he's on our side. I'm glad he's now a judge. Who's going who's gonna, to who's gonna give him a hard time? I'm so proud of him. And, you know, he, there's a few articles where he's quoted. And one of the things that he said, and I want to get Big Hair's opinion on this, too, when we bring him on the show. Dan said, Judge Bain, that is, Danny said that the courtroom belongs to the people. It doesn't belong to the judge. It doesn't belong to the lawyers. It does as citizens, but it belongs to the people. And unfortunately, throughout this great country of ours and around the world, but especially our country or democracy, judges, there's something that people refer to as robe syndrome, where, you know, you have an individual who was either elected as a judge, who was appointed as a judge, and then they put that robe on and uh, the power goes to his or her head and they, they get what's called robe syndrome. 
and they think that you know they rule the world. Well, that's not the case because, again, elected officials work for us, the people, period. And courtrooms belong to the people. They do not belong to the judges. They do not belong to the prosecutors or the defense attorneys. They belong to the citizens. And I think that's a real important distinction. And Dan, uh, that's one of the first things he's quoted on in uh, the newspaper article is that he's going to run his courtroom and it's going to be for the people, not for him. And so here I have a question for you, Todd, being a lawyer and being a, a you know, you've been a defense lawyer for 26 years and you've been in court for all those times and everything. Uh, do you think it's judges who have been on the court for a long time or do you think new judges end up getting this rope syndrome or is it people that have been there for a while and they start believing their own stuff? I think it's a combination of all the above and uh, it's just unnecessary. It really is unnecessary. You know, when somebody enters a courtroom, and we've talked about this in our courtroom etiquette show, right. there's a lot of anxiety involved. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of emotions involved. And a judge's job is to interpret the law, is to conduct, you know, a very, I mean, the courtroom's a very, um, you know, it's, it's the courtroom, the courtroom deserves respect. The process, the judge deserves respect. The, the whole, the attorneys, the court officers, the clerks, the secretary, the courtroom by itself is a place where laws are interpreted. People defend themselves. So, you know, justice prevails, hopefully more often than not. Again, the courtroom is for the people. And you do find judges from time to time, from town to town. And I can't think of any offhand, so I'm not referring to any that I practiced before. I I. And not that I'm going to sit here on the radio and call out judges. Yeah, that would be good. No, we're very lucky here in mid and northern Michigan where I practice that the judiciary is just outstanding. Now, I'm sure there's people out there who don't agree with me, but honestly, um, very professional, very respectful to the the, the individuals in all of their courtrooms. Uh, big shout out to Judge Sarah Spencer Nagel. She's been on the bench for the first week here in uh, Isabella County. Uh, trial court and she's doing an outstanding job she's gonna make a great judge i'm really really happy about uh her appointment there are other great candidates but she got the position but no i mean there's big hair has a judge story big hair why don't we just invite big hair on the show and talk about his experience there you go big hair is now in the mothership hello mr hair good morning guys how you doing it's a beautiful sunday morning so you want to hear my my courtroom story well yes, you know again us. todd when when you when you talk about etiquette in the courtroom i forgot that back in my younger days um i obviously i tried to tell um a ingham county judge what i thought of the system that didn't work in my favor i'll just say um i paid for that mistake and uh, i have learned there is a courtroom etiquette you do not get smart with the judge you do what the judge tells you to do, basically. I mean, if he asks you a question, you answer him. You don't give him smart remarks. You don't give him weird looks, um, just like uh, you talked about last week in your courtroom etiquette. So basically, you were held in contempt of court, right? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> that is correct. Again, that was young, in my young and dumb days where, where, obviously, when we're younger, we think we rule the world and we know best. Well, obviously, the judge in Ingham County made me think otherwise, and uh, I paid for that mistake, and um, um, it won't happen again. <laughs> Basically, he told me, you will never, ever appear in my courtroom again. Do you understand me? And my comment at that point was, yes, sir. <laughs> so, but, but, see, um, <laughs> but see, Big Hair, that's good. You learned, you learned a lesson from that, and that is important. And it's a lesson that stuck with you for, you know, at least 60 or 70 years now. So that's good. <laughs> Maybe not 60 or 70, but still, it's good. You learned a lesson from it. That's, then that was a judge that taught you well. It, he did, and I've never been in front of a judge um, since that time. That happened way back in the you know, middle 80s, I guess it was. But, uh, yes, it will never, ever happen again. Again, I, I'm just so proud of, uh, of Dan Bain, Attorney Dan Bain, uh, who's uh, the new judge now in Brighton, Michigan, Livingston County. Um, the, the, citizen, the citizens of Livingston County uh, are so lucky to have somebody of his stature, experience, professionalism, and, and, and heart. He, he's been a defense attorney 
uh, as long as I have. We started off together. In fact, his dad, Jack, was one of my mentors. I love Jack Bain, um, as well as John. Uh, and, and they're so lucky to have someone like uh, Dan Bain uh, as their new judge in their district court. He's going to do such a great job. He's going to be fair all across the board to the prosecutors, to law enforcement, to defense attorneys. And he's going de- to treat the defendants with respect. And that's important, to treat them with respect. Um, hey, by the way, I have a massive complaint. I mean, guys, when we come back from break, I have a complaint, and it's by consent. I also have a, a marijuana update in regards to a, a township uh, where I appeared over the past week uh, in an attempt to feel the temperature of the citizens and the board as to whether or not they were interested in bringing a license into their community. So we definitely need to talk about that here on the show of shows. But we had some rockers that passed onto the pearly gates, guys. Is that right, Craig? We did. We had uh, Eddie Money passed away uh, a little over a week ago. He had, uh, so at the beginning of the year, he had to have uh, heart valve replacement surgery. And when they were doing that, he had to cancel some shows. Uh, when they were doing that heart valve replacement surgery, they noticed that there was something on his esophagus, and he ended up having stage four esophageal cancer. So they started doing treatment, radiation, chemotherapy. Well, it started interfering with his heart, so they had to stop that, and it only took about a week, and then he was gone. So he was 75. Uh, he lived a good, long life. We, of course, at 98.5 UPS, he was a friend of the station. He We did a show with him, the Coleman Veterans Memorial. Not only did he come out and perform the show, he brought his brother, who was a veteran, so it made perfect sense. He also donated $5,000 of his own money that he made in the show back to the Veterans Memorial. I had interviewed him four times, met him a couple times, every time remembered my name, remembered the morning hustle, remembered my kids, wanted to know how the family was doing, remembered me everywhere I was. I don't know if he did that with everybody, but with all the tributes that have come out about him in the last couple of weeks... Nobody's had a bad thing ever to say about Eddie Money. He was just a class act from start to finish. Uh, and then Rick Ocasek, the lead singer of The Cars, passed away uh, from natural causes. He was 75 as well. He passed away in New York uh, over the last weekend. Of course, Cars were a big band out of Boston, legendary band. He was a big uh, big part of that Boston music scene, Aerosmith, Boston, etc. And uh, he'll be missed, too, because the Cars really haven't played a whole lot together. They played. They were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame a couple of years ago, and they, that was the last time the full band was together, but they hadn't been together in quite a while. So two rockers who uh, moved on. So we're going to play some music from both of them, right, Todd? Absolutely. So we'll play Shaken, a little bit of Shaken by Any Money, and yes, he really does say what you think he says in that song. He told that to me in an interview two years ago on 98.5 on this very radio station, and we'll play a little bit of The Cars, one of their best-known songs, My Best Friend's Girl, to take us out and bring us back. How about that? Love it. All right, we'll be back on the Todd Eleven Live Show. The Todd L. Levitt Law Show thanks you for listening to our podcast. If you have a business you think people would want to hear about, the Todd L. Levitt Law Show accepts advertising. We can promote your business to a very specialized, targeted audience. Any size commitment and any budget. Email Show at gmail.com for more information about sponsoring and advertising on the Todd L. Levitt Law Show podcast.
Welcome back to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Coming back strong with Seven Dust, uh, Craig Russell and Big Hair. Albeit, we did play some uh, Eddie Money and some Cars music on the way out uh, from the last segment. Seven Dust is one of those groups that uh, the music never gets old. And they're still they're still touring. They're still coming out with some new tunage. But, you know, you had Corn, You had uh, the Chevelle. You had Seven Dust. Those type of groups... Uh, you know, to me, that's that's rock and roll. I love I love that music, guys. That's two thousands rock and roll right there for you. I know that's uh, that's one of the the newer rock stuff that you're into and everything. Those guys, you know, all those bands had a big uh, big run back in the uh, early two thousands. Big hair, do you like that kind of music? You into that newer rock stuff? Uh, I, I'm again, I'm back into the eighties long haired uh, hair bands. I'm you know the Van Halens and and stuff like that. I never really got into the the new like Todd said, Corn or Seven Dust. I really, honestly, never really got into them much i i do listen to that type of music but i i'm again i'm an 80s hairband guy i'm the van halen molly hatchet um you know the southern rock type of stuff you know eddie money was my all-time favorite um along with bob seeger you know the cars were uh, a 70s band that i that i was kind of brought up with um you know back when uh, they had the good times roll i think was one of the uh, first songs that the cars ever came out with yep. you know and then it went on to let's go and shake it up and drive and you know and but eddie eddie money was a, a person that uh, again also from back in the 70s with obviously one of the, his all-time uh, hits is two tickets to paradise you know want to be a rock and roll star uh, give me some water uh, uh trinidad you know the, that's that's my era of music pretty much big hair why don't you just get off your horse start singing shakedown you look like bob seeger so start just start singing for us shakedown break down shake down everybody walking to the party line come on big hair no, well here here it is todd's only got three listeners to the show He'll lose two of those three listeners. Todd, aren't we up to 20, isn't it, with the Amish? We're up to 20 now? <laughs> we're, we're up to at least 20. Last weekend, Big Hair and the boys, uh, Levitt Law for Mountain Bike uh, team, we did the Triple Trail Challenge, and the highlight of the whole ride was that we got done shredding Potawatomi and made our way across Waterloo towards DTE. We came out of the single track into this neighborhood for a minute, and there was a sign that said free weed. So this guy who will remain in the location and the guy's name will remain a confidentiality here on the show. But uh, he literally had two signs and it said free weed, which in Michigan were a recreational state. You can gift it. And he was gifting product and he was gifting hits. And uh, I'll just say one of the members of our group, our team, uh, did hit the sativa and uh, in a matter of time, it, it creeped up on him, and he had to bail out. He couldn't even finish the ride that day. It was a 50-mile race. Hey, so, so, uh, so now, big no, hair. We won't mention who that was, will we? No, that, it wouldn't be a good idea. It would not be a good idea. Um, I don't know if his <laughs> wife knows yeah. anything about it. But, <laughs> now, uh, now, now, wait a minute. Yeah, now, wait, when, when you guys do these, when you guys do these big, uh, these big huge races like the the Margie Gisek and stuff like that, don't they like drug test you guys? You can't be doing that stuff, can you? Or is it not that big of a deal? 
No, no, no. They don't drug test us. But why did you have to bring up the Margie Gizek? That was yesterday. And yeah, you were I, that, that's you part ready? of my complaint here. Yeah, weren't you? So in? I, I, I was supposed to be. So Todd Poquette owns 906 Adventure up there in Marquette. He does a great job. He does the polar roll. He does the 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 uh, the crusher. I did the 100 mile crusher this past summer. We talked about that. I did the Margie Gizek camp. The Margie Gizek is a 100 mile, 100 mile or 50 mile race up in the backcountry in Ishpeming and Nagani, which for those who have no idea what we're talking about, it's iron ore country in the upper peninsula of Michigan. And you, if, if it, you can just imagine how rocky, steep, the crevices, the valleys and whatnot. I was all set to do the, uh, the 50 mile race yesterday. And about five months ago, one of my closest friends I grew up with, Dr. Love, a.k.a. Herb Gilbert, he's fifty. He's about 54 years of age. He's one of my best friends. He decides he's going to get married for the first time, sends me a wedding invitation, and just destroys my life. I don't go to weddings. You know my policy. Right. If you invite me to a wedding, I'll give you a five-year IOU. If you stay married, I'll give you a gift. So here's one of my best friends who's geared and married for the first time, and I'm thinking there's no way this guy's going through with it. There's just no way I know this guy. He's not getting married. So I've been texting him every freaking day for the last two months saying, come on, you don't really want to get married, do you? I've been there. I've done it. Just, just don't do it. You're 54. Just keep enjoying life. Keep the money to yourself. So for two months, I text and text him and – you know, go you know, go figure. The wedding's in six hours, and so I couldn't do my Margie Gizek race, and and I'm just I, I was just on the fence about it, and I was just hoping he wouldn't go through with it, or she'd call it off, or something would happen, and he's just, he just screwed up my entire race season now because he's got to get freaking married. Because you know, I'm sure that's exactly what he was. And thinking. I have to go. It's one of those weddings where well, I have to go. And I'm sure he was thinking that exactly when he said, "You know what? Let's schedule the race. We'll schedule our wedding." So we screw up Todd's life and the race and everything. Now, is he a, is he a mountain biker or does he not have any idea about any of this? No, he's not. He owns an ignition airlock company. Okay. We grew up. Yeah. together in metro detroit but who the heck gets married on a sunday at four o'clock in the afternoon the race was yesterday but it would have been a 15 hour race for myself and i i wouldn't have been able to make it from you know nagani nishpanang uh all the way back to this wedding and and, and still be standing so I, I just wanted that's a complaint by consent he gave me permission to say his name so i just want to state that i i, I and, and then i called him about it and he said you know todd if i were you i would have done the race and not gone to my wedding <laughs> but it was too late so now it's sunday at Sunday, he tells me that an hour ago, you know, at 7 o'clock, because I, I called him and said, okay, you ruined my life by getting married. Are you still getting married? He goes, yeah, but guess what, Todd? If I were you, I would have gone to the race. I wouldn't have cared if you missed my wedding. So go figure. Before Big Hair chimes in, because I know he's chomping at the bit to say something, I'm going to say two things. First place, normally your uh, your complaints are you know normally not funny. This was a funny complaint. I don't know why. But secondly, I really don't think anyone's going to give you a whole lot of sympathy. True story. I don't think anyone's going to give you any sympathy on this one, especially women. Any w- woman's going to say, look, it's her wedding day. It's her wedding day. You're her friends. Go to the wedding. Screw the race. Big she's hair. 31. He's 54. Well, that's why he's, he's getting 54, married. She's 31. That's why he's getting married. He doesn't want to lose that. She's willing to marry him. Now, he's going she, with it. She's a lovely. She's a lovely lady. I'm sure she is. I'm she's sure a she lovely is. lady. At least when I FaceTime, at least when I FaceTime them, she doesn't say, what the hell does he want now? <laughs> <laughs> Who did that? I have no uh, idea. Uh, Mrs. Who did that? Yeah, Mrs. Hare pulled that one off. <laughs> but uh, I, I can tell you right now, I've been uh, talking to uh, one of our uh, uh, teammates from the uh, Lovett Law Firm. Vinny, is, he's very, very disappointed in, in you, Double D. I tell you what, uh, because he shredded it yesterday. He had a heck of a time. He had a great race. And um, yeah, he's going to let you have it the next time he sees you. Yeah. Yeah, no, congratulations, Vinny, Kate, Evan, DeKate, both members of Levitt Law Mountain Bike Racing Team. Uh, we love those young guys, and uh, we're really proud of you. Hey, how about some marijuana talk, guys? You want to talk marijuana? 
We, we can do that, but we should probably take a break first. That whole complaint took up the whole second segment of the show. I hope you're happy. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go to break. Okay, so we will take a break. When we come back, we'll actually talk some marijuana news coming back on the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. The Todd L. Levitt Law Show thanks you for listening to our podcast. If you have a business you think people would want to hear about, the Todd L. Levitt Law Show accepts advertising. We can promote your business to a very specialized, targeted audience. Any size commitment and any budget. Email Todd Levitt. Levitt Law Show at gmail.com for more information about sponsoring and advertising on the Todd L. Levitt Law Show podcast. Welcome back to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show, broadcasting and podcasting with my two good friends, one best friend, one brother. You can figure out who's who between Craig Russell, the muscle, and a.k.a. Big Hair, a.k.a. Bob Seeger. Coming back strong with Seven Dust, Waffle. I just love Seven Dust. I love that, the the, the drums, the riffs, the, the tunage, and uh, it's definitely going to... Uh, put my head in the right place as I head to Metro Detroit today for Herb Gilbert's wedding that just destroyed my attempt at completing the Margie Gizek race for 2019. But I love Herb and Laura and wish them all the best of luck. Hey guys, let's get to some marijuana talk. Nobody wants to hear about the biking, the wedding. People want to hear us talk marijuana. Let's do it. Talk it up. Well, this past week, I was invited, I, I, and, I, and I qualify this, I was invited to attend uh, a board meeting in a very nice community in northern Michigan. And this is a community that we've, we visited a couple of years back uh, in an attempt to get them to opt in at that time to the Michigan uh, Medical Marijuana Facilities Licensing Act and possibly grant you know, licensing in the form of dispensaries, grow operations, and whatnot. And and, and nothing came of, of it two years ago. Well, over the past year, I've received, you know, calls from members of this community uh, saying, hey, Todd, can you come back to the board, have a talk with them, kind of update us on all the rules and regulations and where the state is with everything, and possibly the community is ready to uh, embrace a dispensary or other types of you know, cannabis operations. So again, I was asked to come to this meeting. And what do you think happened when I showed up at the meeting, guys? How do you think it went? I would have to say when they saw you walk in, they said, well, here, here's a guy that knows how to get us legal. I'm going to guess they uh, they probably were not real receptive. I have a feeling you walked in and you could probably hear a pin drop. And then all of a sudden the firestorm came at you. I bet I be, I'm going to I'm just going to take a guess and say it didn't go well. Well, well, yeah, you're correct, Craig. First off, great community, great people, great leadership on the board. And 
I, I respect. I'm a con, we, we love the Constitution. I'm a constitutionalist, just like you, Craig. We love the Second Amendment, guys. We can all agree on that. We love the Fourth Amendment, the First Amendment. And I never fault people for their opinions, okay? But the meeting was supposed to take place a week ago. Word got out that I was going to be on the agenda. So a week later, the place was just packed with haters. I mean, it, it, it was a firestorm, to say the least. But again, I some of these people who were against... Uh, having a cannabis business in our community. They're good people. I actually know some of them. But there, there were others there, that, and, and it, never fa- it never fails to amaze me as I've traveled the state over the past two to three years, uh, debating, educating, and talking to groups of, of you know, citizens and boards and councils that you'll always have people who are from these communities that stand up and say, we don't want marijuana in our community. And, and again, did you hear what I just said? They say, we don't want marijuana in our community. And my answer is always the same. It's like, you know, with all due respect, I, I, marijuana has been in your community for 100 years. What makes you think it's not here? And the thing that really pisses me off, guys, as I've traveled the state over the past couple of years is... I wish that these people who have such a passion against allowing marijuana or cannabis businesses, as I refer to it, into their communities, I wish they would have as much passion against the meth problem in their community, against the opiate problem in their communities, against all the alcohol stores that sell alcohol, where, you know, the people that go out there, drink and drive and kill people, or, 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 or you know, feeding people and children and families who, who can't afford to feed themselves. The, the, there's such a passion on both sides of this debate, but, you know, when you go to these meetings, and you talk to these people, you're not going to change their minds. And I don't attempt to do that. I was I was invited to this to this board meeting, and, and I, I I wasn't there to do anything other than just to gauge the temperature to see if this community was interested in bringing a license to their community to provide medicine to patients of the community. And it turned into a, such a firestorm of hate towards me. I said, look, I'm getting out of here. I didn't come here to be a whipping board. But again, I, I, I don't have any, you know, hate or anger towards these people who are against, you know, what I was there for. It's their opinion in our great democracy. But what blows my mind, and I can't say it enough, is where's your passion for all these other issues. It's not marijuana killing people. It's meth. I wish these people would spend one hour with me a day in any court in the state of Michigan or across this country and see what the big problem is. It's meth. It's opiates. It's heroin. But then you'll always have somebody stand up and say it's a gateway drug. So it it just blows my mind that these people are so passionate and they're so against it but yet we have all these other things that are actually killing people and the youth and, and not only youth, but people of all ages. But where's the passion to stop and for, prevent that from coming in your community? It's not there. I don't see it. See, see what happens when you can't race in the Margie Gisek. You get all fired up about this stuff and there's no you've got no outlet for it except for this show, which is but, good. But, but you see my point? And again, I don't have anything against any of the people who are against it. You know, it's just this is a democracy. But where's the passion? Spend a day with me. Spend a day with me in court and watch all the people, all the families being destroyed by meth, by opiates because of our pharma, you know, our big the big companies out there that have just flooded the market with all this stuff. You know, when I was going when I was going to college, I had roommates. I had one roommate that was a raging alcoholic and I had another roommate that smoked enough marijuana to fill up a cornfield, okay? And who do you think, you know, was the danger? Who do you think caused more damage to us fraternity members, the raging alcoholic or the guy that smoked all day? Who do you think, Big Hair? I'm going to say the alcoholic because the alcoholics, you know, a lot of people when they're drinking, they get mean. They get really, really ugly Um, and they just can't handle alcohol. I've lived with the alcoholic. I've lived with the individual who, you know, would smoke all day. I've, I've seen both sides of it. And look, alcoholism is a disease. It's very destructive, you know, and look, anything in excess 
can be too much. So even if you have a legal right to do something, it doesn't mean you can't abuse it. It doesn't mean you can't hurt, you know, and, and be selfish and careless for those, uh, you know, uh, against uh, and, and for the people who care and love you. But what I'm here to say is, you know, these people who are so against in these communities allowing something that's legal to come into their communities where's the passion for all these other issues that are actually killing everybody where is it go to a freaking court i i'm just so pissed off about this because i sit in court every day it's one meth case after another it's families being destroyed it's kids being removed from their parents homes it's people dying out there it's opiate it's heroin i mean it's just it just blows my mind that there's so much hatred out there and there's reefer madness and look there's a lot of listeners out there who don't smoke who don't use it and who don't want it in their communities i understand that all i'm asking you is go to your local courthouse it's a public venue we said it earlier the courts belong to the people sit in a courtroom and find out exactly what's killing everybody and you might have a different opinion and how about alcohol how about alcohol Okay, it's okay to have party stores and liquor stores on every freaking corner in every community in this country of ours. But when it comes to allowing something that provides people medical relief, you know, no, we don't want that in our community. We'd rather just keep the alcohol in. I mean, all I'm saying is there's two sides to everything. There's a lot of hypocrisy out there. And and it just blows my mind. I used to have a boss who uh, had a saying that basically people have their own opinions and everybody can have their own opinions. Not everybody's opinion is right, though. And that's I think that's what this case is all about. But you got to respect the person who doesn't... You, yeah. you can. Yeah, sure, you can respect the but person's But I respect opinion. everybody's opinion. I don't agree with everybody, and they don't agree with me. And again, I say this with utmost respect. I respect the heck out of the people who don't want it in their communities because that's their right. We're a democracy. And I don't have any ill will against these people. I just wish they would spend a day in court in the community in which they live in and see what the problem is in their community. When I hear somebody stand up and say, we don't want marijuana in our community, I don't, I don't make fun of that person. I'm not condescending to that person. I show that person equal respect and try to educate that person and say, guess what? It's already here, but that's not the problem in your community. Go to the local courthouse, you know, and find out what really is the problem in your community. And that, well, and that's what I'm saying. I think people's opinion, it's one thing to be supportive of your community and and one thing to also show up and be a part of the process, which is important. But those people also have very closed minds about all of this stuff. And they're not the ones who are going to at least open their mind a little bit and say, well, tell me why it isn't so bad. I just already have this opinion. It's bad and I don't want it here. And no, none of my neighbors want it here, too. Well, you don't know the reasons why they don't. They just are, their mind is like a trapdoor shut closed. And it's like hearing some of the persuasive arguments you're making. How about you, how about you check out how the, the meth problem in your community is and the opi- op- opioid problem is? How many people are dying from smoking marijuana? How many people are dying from doing meth? How many families are being teared apart from opioid addiction? That's where it really comes down to. But they don't want to see that. They just want to see what they know. And what they know is that marijuana is bad. And they don't even think about the fact they could be making tons of money off of it. But that's another story for another time. This was a this was a great community. I love the community. I love the people. Some of my friends were actually there against what I was there to talk about. <laughs> you know, and again, nothing but respect for these people, nothing but respect for local law enforcement that was there. Um, you know, it was good to see everybody, to, 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 despite what their uh, position was or opinion. But I wasn't there to debate anything. I was just there to talk to the board to see if they had an interest. And I wasn't. It wasn't even on, for my own personal gain. I was there just because I was invited to be there. I wouldn't be the one opening up the business at this point. It would be on behalf of. Uh, another company or entity that would come in and obtain a license. I was just invited to be there uh, to provide information, but boy, whoo, it turned pretty heated. And I, I said, look, I'm, I'm leaving. That's not why I'm here. So uh, I hope they debated it uh, between themselves. And again, again, I had a lot of friends there that were for and against it. And uh, great, they were great people. It's just 
different varying in opinions. But again, go sit in a courthouse, see what the problem is. I've never said that on this show, but each and every day, you know, talk to the judges, talk to the probation officers, the Department of Correction officers that, you know, that deal with everything every day. Ask them what the problem is. Is it marijuana or is it meth? I mean, the difference between marijuana and meth are two galaxies away. Is it just that this community just does not want to get educated on on what this could possibly bring uh, to the community? You know, uh, obviously it's going to help out their local townships with uh, with the tax uh, revenue. You know, it's going to employ people. Um, is it just an education thing that that possibly this community needs? No, you know. Well, the county overwhelmingly, I mean, the county voted for Prop 1. So statistically, the county and the local area voted for Prop 1. Again, again, I'm not just saying this to say this. It's a great, I'm not net mentioning the community. I'm sure there's people from the community listening. It's a great community. I love the community. I love the businesses. I go there. I will continue to go there. It's just you have people who are for it and you have people who are against it. But it seems to me that the people who are always against it are the loudest voices in the room. So as I've traveled the state over the last three years, it, for whatever reason, it's the people who are against it that are the loudest voices, and they're the ones that come out in force. And again, it's their community. Right, look, rightfully so, Big Hair, if they don't want it in their community, then it shouldn't be in their community, well, what, despite what side of the fence you're on or what your opinion is i mean it's their community it's not it wasn't my community i was invited into their community and you know i left respectfully respecting all the different opinions because it's their community not mine but as far as why they don't want it i i mean half want it half don't want it so they're at a stalemate but again i don't i don't fault the people who are for it and i don't fault the people who are against it it's their choice I don't agree with the ones that are against it, but I, I, I just want to empower everybody out there. If you're against it, that's fine. But go sit in a courtroom like I do every day. I can't say this enough and find out what the problem is in your community. And I'll tell you right now, because I'm in your courtrooms, I'm in your community courthouses. It's meth. That's the problem right now. Meth, meth, meth. It's such an epidemic. It's just killing our, our citizens. And uh, our, our loved ones need help. They need help. We need more money and resources for programs, inpatient facilities. You know, the problem across our country, guys, there's not enough facilities to treat the amount of opiate epidemic that's out there together with this meth problem out there. We just need more more help out there. Basically, the vocal minority are the ones that come out to this meeting and the people who voted for it back in November are nowhere to be found. They're probably at home enjoying. And the people who are not are the ones who come out to the meetings. But we've got to take a break on the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. We'll be uh, right back to wrap up the show coming up. The Todd L. Levitt Law Show thanks you for listening to our podcast. If you have a business you think people would want to hear about, the Todd L. Levitt Law Show accepts advertising. We can promote your business to a very specialized, targeted audience. Any size commitment and any budget. Email Show at gmail.com for more information about sponsoring and advertising on the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Show podcast.
Big here, bring us back. Come on. Welcome back to the Todd L. Lovett Law Show. Here's Todd. Short and sweet and to the point. Come on, Big here. You can do better than that. How long have you known me and been on a show? Can you come back a little stronger, <laughs> please? Get, listen, if I had one of those director uh, signs, I'd like slap it and go, take two. So take two. <laughs> Try that again. Welcome back to the Todd L. Lava Law Show. Ah, oh, jeez, oh, Pete. <laughs> I've got to have take, things written take down. Take three. And okay, action. Craig, who flushed the toilet in the background while we were on break, <laughs> by the way? That's all I want to know. Yeah, who is that, Big Hair? Um, that would be Mrs. Big Hair. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Craig, show them how it's done. Ooh. Welcome back to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show, broadcasting and podcasting in the middle of the mitten in the Black Diamond Group Mothership on 98.5 UPS, podcasting all across the world on Libsyn and iTunes and TuneIn and SoundCloud and YouTube and all over the place. Now, here he is, the host of the show, Todd Levitt. Hey, it's good to be back on the show. I just <laughs> left Raisins and I saw Porsche there, and it was a great time. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. I got to go to a wedding. My buddy Herb Gilbert's getting married, and uh, it's it's it, he just destroyed Margie Giesick for me this year. So he needs to stay married at least a, for a year because if something goes wrong, and I don't wish this upon him and Lara, but if something goes wrong in the next year and they end up breaking up or getting divorced before the next Margie Gizek, I'm going to be just pissed off because I went to Margie camp. I did the the crusher. I've been training and training and training for this race. And at 54, 53, 54, he decides to get married for the first time in his life. I mean, come on. Really? You got to do this to me? I don't even go to weddings. So I'm getting ready. Jen and I, we're getting ready. You know, We're getting dressed up. We're going to a wedding. So, Herb, I wish you guys all the best, and I hope you make it. He's got to know how important this is to you because you don't go to weddings. Usually you wait five years. So I, he's, I, hope, I hope he realizes and I hope she realizes how, uh, how important this is. Yeah, and they better and come gonna, over and talk to me during the, you know, during the reception. They, they better name their firstborn after you is what they ought to do. As long as it doesn't look like me. Oh! <laughs> hey now! Hey now, everybody. Hey now. Oh. Hey now. Hey now. Big hair, what do you got going on today? Well, after the show, um, I hate to tell you this, Todd, but uh, I think some of the uh, Todd L. Lava racing team are going to be meeting up at DTE, and we're, I think we're going to probably uh, shred about 40 miles. Yeah, we'll, we'll th- be thinking of you in your tuxedo and drinking your champagne and, and et cetera. But, uh, yeah, we're just going to uh, hop on our uh, tracks and uh, shred 40 miles or so. Great. <laughs> <laughs> those are great friends of yours, aren't they? I love all, actually I love all those guys. We got Big Daddy. So here we sound like an eighties porn troupe. <laughs> I'm double D because Todd T O double D. I'm double D, big hair, big daddy, and the commander. Those are our and, and the shafe. The shafe. You know, we got to go shafe it. So, you know, we got Big Daddy, the shafe, commander, big hair, and double D. Oh, we sound like the village people for sure. I'll tell you this much. It's a good thing they don't have those uh, video stores or the adult section anymore because I couldn't wait to see that uh, Shred the Gnar video you guys are all going to be in. But <laughs> Hey, Todd. Hey, anyhow. Todd, have a safe trip downstate uh, to the wedding, but uh, I hate to break the news to you. You got to get that tuxedo on because the show's over. We got to get going. Oh, come on. Come, come on. We're just getting started. Big hair. I appreciate being on a show, my brother. Say hi to the boys for me. Craig. Same place, same time next week. Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. All right. I'm not just a litigator. I'm an advocator. Take us out with some Eddie money. Got so high we had a pull to the side. We did some shaking till the middle of the night. Shake it. Snap it a finger. She was up and down and around and around. Shake it. The title. 
Drill It at Law Show, brought to you by Chad Malleywell Drilling of Rosebush. Clark Modular Homes, your most experienced and trusted builder in Mount Pleasant. Clear vision windows, siding, roofing, and attic installation of Midland. Mackinac Properties and Northern Michigan Vacation Rentals, buying, selling, and renting properties in the Straits of Mackinac region since 1998. Tim's Collision Plus in Ross Common. Harrison Power Sports, Central Michigan's fastest growing full line Arctic Cat dealer. And Dr. Robert Townsend in Denali Healthcare for your alternative health care needs. Opinions expressed on this radio program do not necessarily reflect the views of this radio station.